Chapter 18. Methodical Creation of a Methodical Illusion. March, April 2015, posted the 30th of April 2015. Novel Research. In late 2014, a new 9-11 related novel appeared called Methodical Illusion. The novel was primarily about the movement of planes and the alleged hijackings which took place on the 11th of September. I first heard about the book in a YouTube video interview and found there was an associated website, http colon slash slash www.methodicalillusion.com slash. The YouTube video itself seemed slightly peculiar because it was stated as being an interview with the writing room, which seemed like a radio program or podcast. However, I could not find a podcast or program with this name. Nor could I find the name of the host, or when the recording was made. In this interview, Rebecca Roth, the author of Methodical Illusion, Dash was introduced as renowned. However, I had never heard of her before. Her story is that she was a flight attendant for quite a number of years, and so she was suspicious about the events of 9-11. She described how she has done a lot of research and she is presented as an expert on the 11th of September. This was also peculiar, because I have been researching into the events of 9-11 for over 10 years, see other articles and my free ebook 110 about all of that. Roth said that she decided to write a novel encapsulating some of her research, from the perspective of a fictional flight attendant named Vera. I bought and downloaded the Kindle version of her ebook and read it. I also posted a review on the Amazon US and UK websites for the Kindle version. This review is reproduced below. The idea of writing a fictional novel about the events of 9-11 is not new, another such effort was the shell game by Steve Alton, 2008. Little of what actually happened on the 11th of September is discussed in Methodical Illusion. Old News In interviews, Roth makes little or no mention of other 9-11 research or researchers. However, almost inevitably, her expertise is called into question when she starts talking about thermite and nanothermite in relation to the destruction of the WTC buildings. It has been known, clearly for seven to eight years that this story is bogus and those promoting this story are liars. If Rebecca Roth really had done her homework, then she would know this too, and she would be pointing this out to other people, as I have been doing for seven to eight years. Roth also talks about the problems with planes and hijackers' accounts as if it's new information. However, I must point out that, thanks to others, I became familiar with the surviving hijackers' story almost ten years ago. For example, a BBC surviving hijackers story was posted on the 23rd of September 2001. It was included in Loose Change 2, LC2, which was released in 2005, as was information about the story that two planes landed at Cleveland Airport, this information was taken out of later LC films. Additionally, it is said that two of the named flights weren't even scheduled to fly that day. All of this information is included in a 15-minute section of LC2, which I don't think Roth has mentioned in her book or any of her interviews. She claims to be an expert on the 11th of September, why would she not mention this, and that the information has been available for years? Roth doesn't follow through with this evidence, she doesn't take you to the end of the road. It's limited hangout again, she does not point out that none of the plane crashes were real, which means that the plane crashes were illusions. Bait and switch? Roth makes the claim that they would use a hijacking codeword if this ever happened to a flight they were on. However, is this true? A flight attendant called Jay Moore posted this comment on an Amazon review of Roth's book. I was a flight attendant with United Airlines for 10 years from 1997. Neither was there a methodical code word, nor a hijack switch in the main cabin. Utterly false. Promotion in March 2015, there was an apparent sudden increase in promotion of the Rebecca Roth and Methodical Illusion with her being interviewed on Coast to Coast, Red Ice Radio, Veritas Radio, now deleted, in fairly quick succession. Curiously, a 9-11 Facebook group that I help administer was also visited by someone who was quite keen for people to listen to these interviews. When I asked this person why, he was rather sketchy about the reason and would not discuss Roth's failure to acknowledge the bogosity of the thermite story. He was not deterred from saying listen to the interviews. It didn't give me a good feeling. Coincidentally, 
The increase in exposure for Roth and her novel was around the time of the German Wings air crash, where, in the official story it was alleged that the co-pilot had become suicidal and deliberately crashed the plane. Around the time of Roth's refreshed promotion, a new video entitled Could This Be The Next False Flag Attack? appeared on her YouTube channel. It sounds like a radio interview, but the interviewer is not named and the program is not stated either. To me, it was quite reminiscent of a talk between Dr. Stephen E. Jones and Dr. Bill Diggle which took place in 2007. I wrote about this in 9-11 Finding the Truth. Roth also seemed keen to talk about this in her various other interviews. Why was Roth talking about Al-Qaeda? Is she trying to scare people? Doesn't she know that Al-Qaeda is, essentially, irrelevant when one considers what happened to the WTC Towers? Who is the host of this interview? Is Roth being presented as something she is not? After all, we really don't know much about her beyond a brief biography on her website. At least, we know she's not a scientist, though she does claim a more varied career in at least one of the interviews, I haven't listened to all of them. Also on the subject of her website, she shows pictures of the destruction of the WTC but this really isn't discussed in any detail in her book, and where it is discussed, it is wrong anyway. There are no pictures of planes or related things to do with flight attendants etc. Also, there is no reference to Elias Davidson's research which is quite relevant to what Roth talks about. Is Rebecca Roth trying to encourage people only to think about what she is suggesting to them, and not consider how what she says fits into a larger picture? And we haven't even discussed her preponderance for wanting to bring Israel into the issue. I think the Roth promotion is relying on folks forgetting things. They try and reveal her research as new information, when it isn't really. Scripted Promotions A video made by Betsy McGee, aka Conspiracy Theorista, documents the strangely sycophantic nature of introductions given by several radio, podcast hosts such as Jeff Rentz, Pete Santilli and others. Roth is lauded as one of the most knowledgeable people that I think I've come across, Santilli, and one of the, right now preeminent researchers on the scene, host name unknown the worthiest of dames, John B. Wells. Kevin Barrett said she may have won the prize for getting the most hardcore 9-11 information into a novel. As the saying goes, who writes this stuff? Keeping Mum Can I suggest that the perpetrators are willing to let most aspects of the plain stories go, that is reveal the plain stories are fake. However, they don't want their technology revealed, that is, the energy weapon and image projection technology. It therefore makes sense that they create distractions about fake hijacker stories and what happened to the passengers, etc. It distracts from the key evidence which proves that even bigger secrets have been and are being kept, secrets which affect the whole of our civilization. Wood or Woods, I don't know. In August 2015, Rebecca Roth appeared on Truth Frequency Radio in an exclusive with Kev Baker. She started to discuss the Tangent explosion in China which had occurred a few days before the broadcast. She said, Dot what's going on with China and the devaluation and their money? All of these things are interconnected, a lot of people don't realize how connected we are, and when I say how connected we are I mean if they start devaluating, devaluing? Money then we start to see things happening like crazy weird explosions that look like a nuclear blast. And if you look at that Chinese explosion you will see. And if you're not familiar with Dr. Judy Wood, Wood or Woods, I don't know. I'm not sure what her name is but, whether there is an S on the end or not. Because I was really concerned about her name as much as I was the pictures I saw on her website. And this was a long time ago. I don't remember the exact spelling of the name. But she showed these cars, she called them toasted. If you look at the pictures of the cars in China, very much like the cars around the World Trade Center which tells us they are using some type of weaponry or something exploded in China and of course that was all done around the same time as an economic hit as well, so, everything is connected. In the past, Roth has claimed to be a 9-11 expert, yet she couldn't remember Dr. Wood's name? She didn't know about the 2007 Key Tam case. And so, she muddles up all this with explosions in China. But hey, it's all good conspiracy fodder now, isn't it? If Rebecca Roth had actually done the research she claims to have done, she would have found the video of showing three successively more powerful explosions in Tanjin. Videos are now, 
since late 2015, available showing the blast crater and damage following the explosions. The 9-11 expert speaks again. A call into the Coast to Coast talk show during Roth's interview on the 19th of March 2015 is revealing, thanks to Bill Ryan for the transcript. George Norori, international caller, Leah, in Ottawa, Canada, welcome to the program. Leah, you're on the air with us. Leah, thanks for taking my call. Remember, George, you had a woman saying that it was Tesla technology that took down the towers? George Norori, that was Dr. Judy Wood. Leah, yes. I'm wondering, Rebecca, if you entertain those ideas at all, because it would even work in with your theory, because your concentration isn't so much the buildings. Rebecca, well, you know, it's interesting. I've actually been contacted by some scientists who are trying to give me a heads up without losing their jobs and without, you know. Everything we do is monitored now, so almost some of our conversations almost encode. And so getting to that. There is a technology that was used, I can almost guarantee you, even though I'm not a scientist, I am taking with one that was relating some information that. Let me just put it to you this way, when. Our military has established, and are actually using, things such as laser weapons. We don't know about it on the ground unless we're in research and development and a scientist, or in the higher up part of the Pentagon, perhaps. The amount of things that were used to bring those towers down. There could have been a dozen or more methodologies. There may not have just been nanothermite, they did find nanothermite, that may only have only been one of the techniques used. They just needed to make sure that they were absolutely turned to dust. And so I am not a building demolition expert, but I am open-minded to believe that. I know that ten years ago, if we would have said somebody had a laser weapon that could shoot through a tank, in five seconds or less, and burn through it in a hot hot hot, and that laser weapons, by the way, chemical lasers, actually do create a great deal of heat, and that's one thing that we see reported from the World Trade Center towers. The degree of heat was much more beyond kerosene fires from jet fuel. George Norori, yes, there's no doubt about that, too. Here again, we see a muddle up occurring, Roth just babbles her way through buzzwords and makes no reference to weather court cases etc. She makes sure she inserts the talking points of nanothermite and high heat. I hope you can see the pattern by now. More lying ensues. In a video made by Betsy McGee, conspiracy theorist, Roth's lies about the official hijackers story are more clearly explained. Betsy carefully breaks down what Roth says, and what is actually in the official record regarding the alleged conversations between flight attendants and people on the ground. Roth claims transcripts have been edited and she also contradicts herself. Betsy concludes. So among many other lies and distortions the main part of your entire 9-11 phone calls made from an airplane hangar theory is based on a bunch of things that were never even said. Yet two books and over 120 interviews later, no one has called you on it. You've been allowed by the so-called truth movement to peddle your lies repeatedly and without question by a bunch of people who are supposed to be the smart ones, the skeptical ones, the ones who supposedly understand the psyop that we're all under and are supposed to be working against. Roth makes up a bogus story about a bogus story of hijacked planes and then the truth movement circuit heavily promotes all this. Is it any wonder we are where we are? I will just add that over the time Rebecca Roth was promoting herself, quite a few people became suspicious of her motives and her actions. This led some people to suggest Rebecca Roth was a creation, an actor etc. This would not surprise me in the least. Closing comments. It does not really matter whether Rebecca Roth is an actress, actor or whether some parts of her book are true. The effect of her implementation is clear, lies and misconceptions have been recycled and the truth movement was deceived, yet again. In closing, I include comments I received from two different people about Rebecca Roth the author. Apparently, an intelligent and questioning mind, seemingly capable of tasking themselves to author a highly revealing story on this profound event still, somehow or other, managed to completely overlook the most important factual work produced to date in the U.S. 3. Or, if they did read it, became strangely incapable of recognizing it as in any way relevant to their fearless attempt to expose the 9.11 plot through their fiction? And, I've been looking at all of this since 2007.
Never heard of this woman. Amazon Review. This is the book review I posted on Amazon. Having heard Rebecca Roth's short interview with The Writing Room on YouTube, after I was sent a link by someone, I decided to buy the Kindle version of this book, which I have now read. It was an interesting book, covering a topic that I, too, have compiled a book about. In my own ten years of research, I had not heard of Rebecca Roth, but I am familiar with many of the facts which are related in the narrative presented in the second half of her book. The book reads well, and initially builds a fairly engaging story, centered around Vera, a flight attendant of many years' experience. Vera has always had questions about the official story of 9-11 but following two terrifying aircraft, airline incidents which directly affect the fictional U.S. President, Jim Sherman, she begins to reinvestigate those events with the help of an old friend of her deceased husband. The first half of the book, more or less, just introduces the main characters in the story and how they are and become connected. This is essentially a build-up to the second half, where some of the anomalies in the 9-11 story are discussed by these characters as they share their research. Most of their exchange of details centers around the plane, passenger anomalies, which was what I wanted to read about, and the alleged theft of gold from the WTC just before the towers were destroyed, a story which I have heard about, but not studied the evidence for. The scenario presented regarding what happened to the planes is intriguing, but is largely based on the alleged cell phone conversations which, as the narrative rightly points out, were used to generate the hijacker's fable and implant it into the public consciousness soon after the events took place. The narrative makes the argument that these conversations were staged while the planes had been landed. Again, the narrative rightly points out that the observed damage at all four crashed sites does not indicate that planes crashed the one oddity in the story is where two of the characters pull a stunt with a wheelchair to demonstrate a hole in security procedures, yet the characters talk about the intrusive nature of TSA pat-downs and so on. So why advocate further security checks when they are uncovering a fraudulent story of hijackings? However, regarding the plane stories, certain issues are overlooked in the narrative, such as if the planes were landed somewhere, what did people in New York see crashing into the towers, and what was filmed there? This is a question which I think can be answered by studying the research of Richard D. Hall and his 3D flight analysis. Also, my article entitled Going in Search of Planes in NYC offers some clues to fit into this story. Regarding the planes, the what people really saw issue is only covered in the narrative with the suggestion that missiles were fired, which may have been the case, though the evidence for this part of the theory isn't really covered in the narrative at all well. It's mainly covered in a conversation between Vera and someone who worked at the Pentagon. More troubling is the inclusion of a physics professor named Jonas and his peer-reviewed scientific paper about thermite being used to destroy the towers. Similarly, the towers are described many times as having collapsed. The research of Dr. Judy Wood, not mentioned or referenced anywhere in the narrative, shows the towers did not collapse. They mostly turned to dust in midair. It seems the author is not familiar with my own research into this area of 9-11 evidence, that the thermite story was implanted to distract people away from the evidence which shows what happened to the towers. I have evidence in spades that this is true. Thermite is a bogus theory, and unlike Dr. Wood's research, none of the thermite evidence was put into a court case, that is those like Jonas promoting this evidence actually know they are lying. So overall, this is an interesting narrative and the president's speech at the end is perhaps one we would all like to hear. But in the end, and I don't mean this to sound cruel, insensitive or wrong, the stories of what happened to the plane some may consider as just a distraction, from asking the question where did the towers go? 3. So please read that book, and mine. 9-11 Finding the Truth 6